Loki Season 2, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called Ouroboros, or OB for short. Another episode I love, the top link in the description. Oh, right. Spoilers for everything MCU. Yeah, everything MCU. Um, yes, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So, yeah, love that we pick up exactly where we left off last time. I don't think it was a mistake to leave us with such big mysteries. That's a great way to build hype. I think it would have been a massive mistake to not pick like if if it had if you had gotten a bunch of stuff before we would just have been sitting like okay come on what happened though where did Lo where or as we now see when did Loki go what's gonna happen with the you know we still don't know what's you know by the end of this episode we don't know what's gonna happen with the non pruned timelines you know but at the very least, what's where or when is Loki, and yeah, so yeah, very cool opening with uh, you know zooming out or pulling out from the statue and slow mo chase, and you know Loki keeps insisting, you know, Mobius, you know, we we know each other, and he says. I don't know you, which goes from week to super week, dude. And yeah, <laughs> he lands on one of the flying cabs from the fifth element. Just kidding. I it, they're significantly distinct from each other, and crash. And he he meets Casey, who you know presumably even the future version has still never encountered a fish and yeah love the use of handheld cam throughout this episode and the you know there's times where like the camera is basically like they're moving from one place to another and you know the show does sometimes use cinematic camera work to extremely great effect but I love the the you know this mix of like the handheld here has this sort of, you know, like this, like we're taking a tour. You know how nice. You know, look at. So this is this is where you'll be working. You know, just and but at the same time, it's this like. You know, the set doesn't look like anything we've ever seen before. Not exactly. You know. And. Let's see. Yeah, and we pretty quickly get back to Mobius and B-15 looking at the pruning. And, yeah, you know, Hunter X-5 is trying to tease Mobius about the... Um, yeah, the, the jet ski thing. And Mobius <laughs> makes the classic nerd mistake of, Oh, dude! I'm so glad you asked. You see, what it is is, and it's like, no, 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 I, oh my god, I don't care. I was trying to make fun of you. God, you suck the fun right out of it. And they're called into the war room, which should settle things. You can't fight in there. Should should be able to, to calm everything back down. And, yeah, really cool with the wall of five canes. And then we have the, um, right, loved seeing, you know, I just watched Matriarch where Kate Dickey, who here plays General Docs, is also amazing. So just, yeah, it's really, really psyched to see more of her. It's not the first, you know, I've, I've seen her and stuff before I watched Matriarch, but that was one where she really made a very strong impression. So yeah you know really looking forward to seeing more of her on on this show and yeah you know we again get the the exchange you know this change is nothing versus this change is everything you know because that is the sort of philosophical 
you know that that is a philosophical issue that that is being brought up here you know does it matter to you who is behind who is who is telling you what to do or do you simply accept it because you've been, I mean you've been doing it and it's been fine you know why why does it matter who's telling us it's worked so far you know versus you know well if the person if if whatever authority we've been following up until now has been lying to us why what are they not telling us what are we doing that we can't know the truth about it you know so really really love the the show bringing that in and and yeah you know judge gamble played by Liz Carr decides you know stop all pruning and Loki returns and really embarrasses Hunter X5 by very easily disarming him you know you can tell X5 is not okay he's it really hurt his ego and yeah you know prunes the wall and reveals you know m more more shows and, and movies should have like big dramatic reveals like that big visual dramatic reveals and let's see I, I love that there's this one guy I who I guess is one of the judges because he's sitting in that room and he looks yeah or, or yeah a judge or a general something and he's asleep until like most of the way through the the scene that's yeah, I guess he's not woke. And God, anti has did all these are such jokes. Anyway, yeah, and and I like the thing with you know, it, it was a draw. So you both kick each other through time doors, is what you're saying. Just, yeah. Because, you know, even with everything on the line, Loki still can't let go of his ego. Not completely, at least. And, yeah, it was very fun. The, the reveal that all along there was a person in there in the elevator. And, you know, she's horrified at the, the time-slipping Loki. And we meet... The, yeah, they go to repair, you know... And love seeing Kihi Ki Kihi Kwan in you know poor Wayman Wang just got done doing his taxes and now this you know but so happy that he has gotten a you know his his career has gotten a, a boost you know he there, there were a lot of years where he wasn't acting you know he he realized they don't have good roles for Asians so he, he stopped acting he went behind the camera now he's back and I'm I'm so I could not be more thrilled he's amazing just yeah so happy he's he's on this and yeah he did see Mobius once before Mobius forgot but it was 400 years so and no one's been there in in the interim so that can help explain why OB is, you know, slightly awkward around other people. He does not see very many others. And, yeah, and, you know, the you have the thing of, you know, one of the, the other guys? Oh, no, there are no other guys. You know, OB is the only person who works down there. And, I mean, when he, like... He fixes a thing, and then he puts, like, the, the, I guess it's not a receipt, but I actually have no idea what y'all call it in America. But, yeah, he, he takes the paper for the, the thing he was supposed to fix and, and puts it on the, the thing, the, the sticky thing, you know, to, to make it stick. That has to be a reference to him doing taxes in everything, everywhere, all at once. That is just, yeah, love it. Yeah, there's no flaw in Latin logic. <laughs> That's quality save, writers.
and I really love the way they edited the the conversation, the the this thing of you know past Ob talking to present Loki and present Moby is talking to present Ob, and going back and forth, you know, figuring out this you know love how ridiculous sci-fi concept this gets and yeah you know he he's like ah oh, you know the why why won't why is the the lamp flickering that's weird you know and mobius says oh, it's, it's not the it's not the lamp there are power surges all across the tva and then ob looks directly at him and says what did you just say and it's like oh if something is freaking out, Ob, who's been so cool, like he's literally witnessing time slipping, and he's like, "Oh, never seen that inside the TV." You know, I didn't think that was supposed to happen to the TV. I can't quite reconcile. You know, both versions of him say reconcile, but then it's like, "Oh, you know, power surges all over the TVA," and he's like, "This is not okay." You know, just yeah, that was a really great way to to make clear. Yeah, and love when he explains about the the timing of the the pruning and and yeah and the thing when you know Mobius and Loki argue over which is worse the the skin thing and pruning and yeah really glad to have the the two characters back bickering. I hope there's more. I one one thing I didn't love about the first season was I felt like you know they do a really great job with the two characters spending a lot of time together in the first two episodes, and I think it's like the third episode. Then they split them up, and you know they they do eventually get back together, but it's just I I hope that in this they spend more time together. They just they play off each other so well. Not to say that Loki and Sylvie don't also, but yeah. And I love the the ridiculous suit, and you know, Mobius is like, "How am I gonna hoof it in this suit?" And and you know, when when Ob explains, no, 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 like this is seriously, this is what's gonna happen if you don't make it back. And he's like, "Oh, you're about to see me really hoof it in this suit." And Ob's like, "Okay." <laughs> And, yeah, and we go back to, to Loki, you know, going through the, the hallway and ADRing the line, the time stick, because I guess, I really hope that was like an overcautious, you know, per, some, some overcautious creative. I really hope that they didn't like test this with an audience and somehow someone in the audience was like, What's Loki doing again? Because, like, we we just went over this. I mean, holy crap. I've got ADHD. Even I could follow that. And, yeah. You know, he's he's looking for a time stick. He's, you know, the, the timer. You know, oh, this is, this is when it is. And then the phone starts ringing. Great. Now he's going to have to deal with the crew of the Nebuchadnezzar entering the Matrix. As if he didn't have enough on his plate already. And Sylvie's at the door, recognizes him, which is interesting for the, the yeah, looking forward to, to figuring out exactly, because that's not like, you know, last we saw, she, she wasn't in the TVA anymore, but she's back, and this is a Sylvie that recognizes him, so it's not like a, a different, yeah, just looking forward to, to seeing that, and he gets pruned, and it's at the very last second. You know, he flies into to Mobius, and they end up inside. The, yeah, and yeah, the we we see General Docs, Hunter X Five, and various others. You know, care, there's like maybe a dozen people, fully armored up. They've got the the all this equipment, these these pruning bombs and such, and you know, B fifteen. Is like, is this all of this for Sylvie? And you know, gotta wonder is yeah, what what exactly is about to happen here? And yeah, in case you got to this part of the video without realizing, there is a post-credit scene here, and 
it looks important so you know if you haven't watched it yet you know pause this video go watch it and then come back because I'm about to spoil it and I think it's too fun to to be spoiled so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that everyone still watching have watched the the post credit scene so yeah Sylvie's you know okay by which I mean she's in Oklahoma and steps into a product placement I mean a McDonald's and I really like the kid at the counter like you can tell you know he's like ah oh, I practiced for this Ma and Pa are counting on me little Billy too I'm gonna put some food on the table we're not gonna keep eating roadkill and you know Sylvie walks up and he's like okay so here here's the you know just it's very nicely done he's he's you know line you know outlines everything that they have that's yeah and you know Sylvie seems like it you know yeah she ends up saying you know I'm I want everything I, I want to try it all you know because now she finally has freedom but but she does start by s insisting no rat meat which I mean, I think you can forget about McDonald's. Then I, I'm not sure there's any fast food place in America that you can be certain there's no rat meat. But you know, but I do seriously though. I do appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's what she's been eating. You know, she and she also mentioned, you know, everything I eat has to be fully dead. I don't want to eat something with a face. You know, that's like holy crap. You know, yeah. When you're on the run from the TVA, yeah, those are the the kind of th kinds of things that you have no choice but to eat if you want to live. You know, she she can't settle somewhere. She can't be be sure to find food that is, yeah. Um, yeah. This was a very strong season opener. I have very very. I am supremely optimistic for the rest of this season I mean we've had great season openers not all of the shows go on to deliver fully but no I, I am really really this yeah this was this was absolutely amazing and yeah um, yes Next episode will be sometime next week. Um, yeah. And, yeah. I, I like to, to imagine that if at some point in the future I find myself in a ridiculous looking, like, astronaut suit and there's a, a crack in the glass I I hope that Kihi Kwan will be there to apply a little bit of duct tape here I thought that was just for ducks <laughs>